Good morning. I wanted to shoot this uh, quick video on exit pupils because I happened to go to the local astronomy club meeting uh, on Friday night at uh, it's the Astronomical Society of Las Cruces and they was having a sale of used items and I ran across this item right here which basically is a 50 millimeter focal length camera lens attached to a star diagonal with a 25 millimeter eyepiece with crosshairs in it and I thought that was interesting and uh, I managed to buy it for two bucks so it <clears throat> wasn't a <clears throat> giant drag on my uh, income but the thing that was interesting to me about it is of course camera lenses are not fixed in their folk in their aperture they um, unlike a regular telescope let's say if I buy a refractor that's f7 uh, that focal ratio is fixed but it a camera lens will have a, um, a fixed aperture uh, on the outside, but they they vary the focal ratio by using a, a shutter mechanism, which uh, stops down the aperture. And, uh, and of course, that's not ideal at all in astronomy. But... Uh, the thing about it is, is I can demonstrate exit pupils with this thing by simply turning a ring. So, for example, um, let's see if we can see this on the camera. I'm going to slide back a little bit. And you can see right there, see that circle inside the lens? That's the exit pupil at F2. Now, if I turn the ring to F4, you can see it's gotten smaller. It's also gotten hexagonal, <clears throat> which is the kind of shutter mechanism they used in cameras. Here I'm going to go to F8. It's smaller still. Now if I go to F16, it's fairly tiny. Now in a regular telescope um, with a fixed aperture you wouldn't, uh, this wouldn't be a problem. Now at exit pupils above seven millimeters uh, the eye stops down the aperture because that's all the eye opens up to is seven millimeters in healthy adults I'm in my late 60s now, so my eye probably doesn't even open up to much more than 6 millimeters because you begin to lose even some of that capability as you age. So, it took a little while thinking about this. I had to do some math. But, um, and it was hard to measure the exit pupils on the, uh, in the eyepiece because I could, I could take a, a millimeter lens here and put it up to the uh, exit pupil and try to measure it but because it turns hexa hexagonal you really can't get an accurate measurement on it so mathematics is really the best way to deal with it so what I came up with is that at F2 the um, <clears throat> the Um, exit pupil was 12.5 millimeters and uh, it, at f4 it went down to 6.25 these are ratios and at f8 it went down to 3.25 and at f16 it went down to 1.56 millimeters of exit pupil so but at this point <clears throat> you're stopping down the aperture so much that you just you can't even use it at all at, on the night sky although the focus is fairly sharp at uh, at f4 you're at 6.25 millimeters and that's below the 7 millimeter exit pupil of the eye 
so it is useful but I found when I was looking at the stars and I tried to look at Andromeda Galaxy with it that it wasn't uh, uh, very sharp and of course at two power which is a, that's all this is is, is a two power system uh, Andromeda didn't show up very well as losing more light through the uh, device than, than I would <clears throat> you know normally and it didn't magnify Andromeda enough to make it jump out at me uh, of course that was under some moonlight I haven't really done any dark sky observing with it um, but that's all I have for you I've been I've been looking at a an f7 refractor uh, a 102 millimeter refractor that I'd like to buy so some of the numbers are kind of interesting on it here here's my math um, there we go up above there is the math on the device I just showed you but this math down here is on the um, exapupils for an F7 system now this is just a simple ratio here if you want a 7 millimeter exapupil times 7 which is a focal ratio you end up with a 49 millimeter eyepiece so a 50 millimeter eyepiece would give you a 7 millimeter exapupil with an F7 system like that and it would be operating in its lowest useful magnification uh, and a refractor like this, a high-end refractor, of course it takes two inch eyepieces but I'd be, probably be operating a 32 millimeter so my um, <coughs> lowest useful magnification with the eyepieces I'd have would be between f4 and f5 on exit pupils which is really nice image brightness in modern skies especially operating at your lowest useful magnification brightens the skies so much with a good optical system that it looks washed out and, and of course with my eyes only seeing it uh, with only six millimeters of exit pupil that's really where I want to start and that would be a 42 millimeter eyepiece and uh, so a 32 is fine um, and you really don't want to go below 0.5 right there which is your uh, 0.5 millimeters is probably the highest magnifications you really want to deal with in, in optical systems um, uh, the, the eye and the telescope combination uh, maxes out about there and uh, so anyway, there you have it. Here's a uh, fixed power, fixed eyepiece uh, optical system which can demonstrate the whole range of uh, exit pupils uh, in a device from F16 right down to F F2. And I'll show it to you one more time. There you can see it. And Take it all the way down to, there's F2, there's your exit pupil, there's F2.8, there's F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16. That's fun stuff for two bucks. Uh, there's a practical demonstration of exit pupils and focal ratios. Uh, so all you have to do is um, there's two ways to figure exit pupils. Uh, the aperture over the magnification. In this case two power over um, 14 millimeters of aperture would yield um, a 7 millimeter exit pupil but in this case the actual <coughs> aperture at f2 is 25 millimeters so over 2 
we get a 12.5 millimeter extra pupil, which is uh, the eye stops down anyway. <laughs> so it's uh, again, as I say, fun stuff. I hope you got something out of the video. Uh, see you later. Bye bye.